Um, and as introduced at the beginning from MIT Media Lab, I was a designer um, before I came here, and now I started to uh, get more and more interested in engineering and science. So I'm here to share some of my learning experience and also some of the projects I did while I'm also learning. Um, this type of shape changing lamps to stiffness changing chairs, how we can program the physical materials. And uh, the easier way to say that is air flows in and out of the room. So today, all the projects I show you are going to be something related to playing with air in a bladder. And this is what I mean by air. It basically we inflate something and something grows bigger and smaller. Everybody knows it's a little bit. And uh, here is what I mean by air out. Uh, when you vacuum the air out, and you can imagine you can change the size of what's inside the bag, and also you can change the stiffness of what's inside the bag. And we basically use these two very simple principles and make some of the shape changing objects. This is this is one of our very early experiments to test out the vacuuming effect. Uh, it's soft at the beginning, but once you start to vacuum the air out, it becomes very really stiff and stays in the shape as your hand forms. And that's what uh, one of the things we did is a shape changing chair. Imagine you're going to a picnic during the week, uh, weekend. Uh, you want to wrap a carpet or something to put in the back of your car. But once you arrive uh, to your picnic location, you might want to uh, have a table or a chair that's kind of similar to what's in your living room. And in this case, you can just easily grab a stone or whatever box and form the, the carpet into a shape and vacuum the air out. And it stays very stiff. In this case, you can sit on top. Um, if he can sit on top, I'm sure lots of people here can sit on top as well. And afterwards, you can change it to soft again and wrap it back. Um, of course, you can imagine you use this thing, for example, on the beach, and you can make it into a bench that you can lie on or whatever uh, imagination you, uh, you want to apply to this soft material. Go a little bit into uh, what's really happening inside the air bladder. Actually, we have, instead of ha have layering of clothes, here we have layering of sandpaper. It's a special type of paper that has a bigger friction uh, in between. So everybody perhaps knows this. It's basically friction between layers is based on the force uh, and also the uh, characteristic of the material itself. And if when we vacuum the air out, basically you are applying bigger force on top of the layered materials. In that way, you will create a bigger friction, meaning it's harder for you to separate the, the two layers of material. Uh, and uh, if we think this this performance from a global point uh, for, from the global point of view, uh, you can see it's actually increased the resistive uh, tensile force. Basically, it's harder for you to bend it or you can deform it. And this is how we um, look into different materials and see how it behaves. For example, if it's normal paper, the printing A4 printing paper, uh, it changes a little bit. But uh, as I was saying, if you use sandpaper, it will behave uh, more dramatically. Basically, it changed to very, very stiff from very soft. And that's another thing we made with this material. Uh, that is to simulate different kind of um, materials. Here, when we project a fur-ish texture, it's really soft. And then you can change it to uh, a foam-ish material, and it becomes a little bit stiffer. And finally, when we project wood texture on top, it becomes super stiff, you can knock on top. And we were saying, next time you go to Ikea, maybe you don't need to actually walk around a really big space uh, of different materials, see which one you want to buy. You just literally stand in front of the shelf 
uh, switch the materials that you are happy with and then really feel it with your hand. And this is just a simple thing to show how you can watch a movie and also feel, oh, water is soft, but then uh, the land is hard. This is, um, we're just playing with the structure a little bit. Instead of just having one airbag, if you have lots of airbag, then you can decide which one you're going to vacuum and which one you don't. Uh, in this case, for example, you can make uh, one side easier to bend than the other. And if you combine this with some sort of um, origami pattern, you can fold things into shape. For example, you can store your plates when it's flat, but then you can just easily fold it into a, a, a place shape when you need to use them. And we use the principle to uh, ask. This is to also show how we can embed sensing into the material. So when you touch the material, the material knows you are touching it. And we made a shoe with, uh, with New Balance, actually. Um, we went to their workshop, start to experiment how this kind of stiffness changing material can be used in, the, in, 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 a, in this case for a shoe. Uh, the idea is, OK, when you are walking, for example, in a museum on a very flat floor, you want your shoe as light and also as soft, as flexible as possible, because you need a com uh, comfortable feeling. But then when you go hiking, uh, you want the shoe to be stiffer, especially in this part, to protect your, your ankle. So in this case, the, the shoe itself can automatically switch from soft states to a stiff states by itself. And this is just some pictures we put in here to show what we did in the New Balance uh, workshop. The exciting thing as a designer is you, you try something out with uh, an engineering fact, and then you, you just use your imagination to think you want to do, and then you can contact the real world. In this case, we just tell the shoe designer, hey, we want to do this. Can we go there? And they were like, yes. Maybe one day this thing will be on the market. And um, this is just the whole process of how we made this shoe. It has MIT and New Balance logo in front. Uh, the idea is in the future. I know all, uh, when I was a kid, I really, I really hate tight my shoelace. Um, and in this case, you can just kind of wrap it a little bit. And because it's going to become stiff and stay the shape, so it's going to wrap your foot. And uh, uh, in this, in, then you can get rid of the shoelace. And if you see this thing from the side, and if you stay carefully, um, the video running. You will see as the air vacuum out, there is an end coming out. So you can tell the stiffness is really changing. Um, this is part of my talk, which is vacuuming air out. But the other fact we are all familiar with is um, putting air in, inflating. But inflating can change the shape uh, of something as well. And here is to show Instead of a balloon, we actually made a half balloon with a little bit rigid paper on the, on the other side. So when you inflate, it will push the surface to bend to one direction. And this is just to show how we made it. We have this silicone, silicone soft material layer and also paper layer in the middle. So we can control the direction of how this balloon will be inflate. And by compositing different paper uh, with different origami patterns inside the balloon, we can control the curvature of the bending. You can tell it's kind of like a snake or like, I don't know, like some plants. Um, and by placing different air bubbles along a single stripe, you can turn a stripe into a square or you can turn a 2D surface into a flower. A little bit of what we are doing now, if you just think about the balloon, when you, uh, when you blow air in, it will inflate evenly across the surface. Here we call it isotropic deformation in engineering. But um, yeah, this is what happening here. But what we did is we also composite a paper layer together with the soft material uh, to create difference in the elasticity. So when we blow air in, the air tends to go towards the softer uh, side. 
that's how we can control the thing to form different curvatures. And that's called anisotropy. And we made uh, something with it. You can check the name. Uh, basically, we pull the rope. It will wrap it itself, turn into a kind of energy saving bulb shape, and like that. Just imagine now everything at your home can become alive. It has its own life. Uh, when you are working on the table, the lamp can just kind of set. Okay, so now it's your working stage. So I will transform into something that can give you better lighting. And this is another uh, case. In, in, in this situation, it's a phone that can transform to interact with you. Uh, when the phone call comes, it doesn't alter its own body to alarm you, hey, there's a phone call, and then you pick up it, it will stay in a curved shape, so it's easier to hold the iPhone. Uh, and then you can place it on your arm, it wraps itself, turn into a watch, and if you want to do iPad with whatever issue manipulation, it will turn into a flat and rigid piece. And the, the material itself, as I mentioned, can sense uh, itself. It can sense the human interaction, so it knows where I'm using it and also where of my body parts I'm placing it onto. This is the very last example is actually a transformable iPad case. Just imagine now covers of phone can change as well. Uh, and uh, we are fabricating uh, bigger air bubbles and also smaller air bubbles on top of the bigger air bubbles. Just imagine a bunch of balloons layered together. And when you start the game, the two bigger airbags you need to play first to uh, function as a game weaver, so it's easier for you to hold it. And when you need to turn the car left and right, the smaller air bubble that you saw earlier will inflate column by column to show which direction you should, you should turn towards. And you can imagine this thing uh, on your bicycle handle or on your steering wheel. So instead of hearing or seeing GPS, you can just listen to where you should go. Or maybe mom is navigating uh, her kids where to go by, by happy. This is, this is just to, uh, that's the easiest way I can find out to kind of express what, uh, what our dream really is. Uh, everybody knows now we can easily program anything in software. Uh, you can make, for example, a, a, a cartoon, or you can make uh, a weather application, or you can make a Google, but everything is virtual, everything is fake. But now we are living in a real environment. How we can actually bring this programmability and also this this animism, this this living feeling into the real environment? How how about one day we can actually make a car that can communicate and laugh and transform? Or how about one day we can actually invent a banana that can sing? Um, in movies, we've already started doing so. This this clothes from After Earth can change color. Uh, it change from brown to black, but it's dangerous to just show, just indicate the wearer. Oh, something happens. You should you should pay more attention. Or maybe in the future, we are also thinking. Actually, we are working on this plane project. How the wing can also change based on condition. Just like a bird, when you want to go higher, you might want to flip. And uh, when you want to go low, you just keep straight and then you can uh, slide down. And also when you want to rotate yourself, the entire thing can change from being stiff to being soft. Then you can easily go wrap your own body and then it's easier for you to rotate. It's, um, it's all based on how you can program the physical, pro uh, physical properties of the material. Or this is uh, something we are also dreaming of. How about a shoe? It's just a piece of cloth on the floor. When you step on it, it just wraps uh, your feet by itself. And when you jump into the water, it will just turn into a fin um, to, to help you to swim. Just like the amphibian animals can do, like frog. Um, the very last video we made, uh, just for you guys, it's pretty short. 
to remind you how beautiful the physical world is, to work more 